Are you hoping to add a chow chow into your family but you're not sure how they'll react around children and pets? Well, in this video, we're going to take a deeper look to help you make your decision. Welcome back to the Fenrir Chow Chow Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Franny and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. Everything we do here is dedicated to helping you find the perfect breed for you and then helping you become a high level canine leader who can raise the perfect canine companion. If that sounds like you, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to make sure you never miss another upload. So let's jump right into today's video. Chow Chows are certainly a fluffy teddy bear looking breed that may attract children to come and stroke and play with them. However, the Chow Chow is usually a very independent breed that have often been described as being almost feline like. They know their own mind and they will tend to approach you when they want fuss. The rest of the time they're happiest sleeping or being alone. This makes the chow chow not the best option for families with small children. Chow chows are best for families with older children who can respect when your canine wants their own space. Children must be taught that your chow chow will approach when they want to play or be stroked and should otherwise be left alone. Obviously every dog is different and some chow chows may be more tolerant to younger children than others. It's simply something to consider before you bring one into a home with small children in it. Therefore, it's essential that you should spend time socialising your chow chow properly and also teach your children to respect their boundaries. If you can do this well, there's no reason why you couldn't live together in perfect harmony. It is, however, certainly not advised that you leave any children and your canine unsupervised. It is a good idea to crate train your chow chow. This will give your chow chow an area that's their own, away from the hustle and bustle of the house. It's important that if you decide to crate train your chow chow, that your children know to leave them alone when they decide to take themselves into their crate for some alone time. It's essential that you teach your children how to act around your chow chow, and children need to understand that a chow chow puppy may nibble at their hands and feet. However, they'll soon stop this if you redirect the puppy's attention to their chew toys instead. Another thing to bear in mind is that in the wild, dogs will play tug-of-war games to assert their dominance. It's not a good idea for children to play tug-of-war games with your chow chow, as these games can also get your puppy overly excited, which can lead to bad behaviours and unwanted things such as biting, humping and scratching. Chow chows do not tend to be the type of dog to play fetch all day or to play with toys all day. They will be more content sleeping on their own or doing their own thing. However, every dog is different and some may be more playful than others. Children should be taught to never approach any dogs while they're eating, drinking or sleeping. If a child does approach them, your chow chow can become startled and may naturally mouth at whoever's approached them. A great way to help your chow chow bond with any children in the household is to let them help feed your chow chow, let the children hold the leads whilst on walks and help your children to train your chow chow puppy easy commands like sit and also teach your children how to become good canine leaders. This ensures that your chow chow knows that everyone else in the family is in charge and not them. When children are playing with your canine they should keep it in a calm fun atmosphere as when your children gets excited your chow chow will too. Hey guys if you want perfect puppies like all my mates here are and you're interested in how it is that as a professional canine behaviourist I go about raising and training perfect puppies I have a completely free course that I think you might be interested in, called the principles to the perfect puppy. There'll be a link down in the description box below it is completely free of charge and you can go and check it out right now so I can't wait to see you over there. Children should always be watched when they're around any dogs as children will often try to climb or sit on a dog's back or prod and poke them and this can lead to your chow chow becoming very unhappy and even lead to them becoming nervous or aggressive. Chow chows as we have said are usually a very independent canine despite being bred to work in packs to pull sleds. If you've not properly socialised them to different breeds of dogs or animals they may be wary of meeting them when out on walks. Chow chows that have been correctly socialised should have no issues with any other dogs unless they're provoked. They can also sometimes have issues with dogs the same sex as them, but this again can be prevented by plenty of socialisation to both male and female dogs during the first six weeks of their lives. The same goes for other animals too, if your chow chow has had interactions with cats, birds, rabbits and other animals during the first crucial learning weeks of their lives, then they should have no issues in the future. Chow chows do have a high prey drive, 
So they should never be let off the lead unless you know they have perfect recall to ensure that they don't stalk and catch animals like squirrels or birds. It's still advised that you do not leave any small pets with your chow chow unsupervised as accidents can happen. If your chow chow has not grown up with other dogs or animals, you should introduce them to new family pets outside of the home in a neutral environment. If you are planning on adding a new dog into your household, it's a good idea to take your chow chow with you when you select your new puppy. If you're introducing your new puppy to your chow chow on a lead, ensure you keep the lead slack though so that no tension is felt through the lead, as this can make your chow chow anxious and tense. You should watch both dogs' body language to try and anticipate both dogs' reactions. Some negative body language to look out for includes teeth being on show, heckles raised, a rigid tail that's pointing up or curled underneath that or an undercarriage, and ears that are up or flat to the head. The body language you want to see includes slight wagging of the tail or a relaxed tail, a relaxed mouth and ears, open eyes and a relaxed stance. Overall, if you properly socialise and train your chow chow, you should end up with a polite, well-mannered canine companion. They are ideally best suited to a family with older children that will know when to give your chow chow their own space, but with the right amount of socialisation and a calm, consistent approach, they could live in harmony with younger children as well. I hope you enjoyed today's video, if so please make sure you hit that like button, get involved in the comment section down below and don't forget, if you're new here make sure you subscribe as we have two dedicated chow chow videos coming here every week. So I can't wait to talk to you again on the next episode of the Fenrir Chow Chow Show.